This is the definition we had last class, which I know was a long time ago, but hopefully you remember it and have been contemplating infinite sets over the weekend. So a set is countable if and only if there exists a surjective function from the natural numbers to C. Does this have to be a total function? So we're going from the natural numbers to C. Surjective means we've got at least one in. Is it okay if the function's partial? Yeah, so it's okay if the function's partial. If it's partial, it would just mean we didn't need to use every natural number in our mapping, but our goal is to show that C is countable. So if we can count it without using every natural number, we're okay. So here function definitely means partial. We also define infinite sets, and these definitions should be a little more bothersome. We said it's infinite if there's no bijection. So now we, we know the bijection is the total function surjective injective, all of those. Before getting more on that, I, I want to ask the question, we kind of assume that infinite sets exist, and we did some things thinking about infinite sets. Is it obvious that infinite sets exist? It's not obvious at all. And it's actually a pretty strange question. So we can always come up with a definition of something and call that an infinite set. But there's no obvious notion of what an infinite set should be. And it's actually something people had a pretty hard time coming up with a definition for. The first one that really thought about this and came up with a good definition of what an infinite set is was Richard Dedenkind. Does anyone read German? I think the title means something like, what are the integers all about? The Z here. That's a Z. That's supposed to be a Z. That's why we use Z for the integers. It's the German word. This is the definition he came up with. A set is infinite. It is a definition. He's just making up. We kind of have this notion of what infinity means. What it means for a set to be infinite is that it is similar to a proper subset of itself. A set that is not similar to a proper subset of itself is finite. How do we like the definition? What does similar mean? What does similar mean? Good point, yeah. Similar is kind of not a great term to use here. We're going to interpret that, and I think this is correct in how he would interpret it. If we don't care about the actual elements in a set, what does it mean for a set to be similar? A set is just a collection of mathematical objects. The only thing that it would mean for sets to be similar is they have the same cardinality. This means same cardinality. So if a set has the same cardinality as a proper subset of itself, and remember, when we say regular subset, that could be the same set. But proper subset, we really mean there are some elements that are not in the set. The proper subset, if S is a proper subset of T, T has every element of S and some more. There's at least one element that is in T but not in S, and every element in S is in T. Now this definition starts to seem pretty weird. For finite sets, a proper subset always has cardinality less than the set it's a subset of. We have some elements that aren't there, and the cardinality is a count of the number of elements. Yeah. Well, by that definition, couldn't either only the natural numbers or the real numbers be infinite? There are infinitely many infinite sets. So if we accept that the natural numbers is an infinite set, which is part of what we're going to get to here with this definition, well, then the natural numbers with zero removed is also an infinite set. Right. And the natural numbers with one removed is also an infinite set. We can remove all of the, the numbers we want from the natural numbers one at a time, and it's still infinite. Does that match your intuition? It should. So one way to think about that is, remember our definition of set cardinality was a one-to-one -one mapping. If we have the natural numbers, and now we're going to create a subset of natural numbers which we remove zero from, is there a bijection between those two sets? Sure. We connect 0 to 1, we connect same cardinality. There's a clear bijection between the two sets, and according to Dedekind's definition, if we can remove an element, making it a proper subset, without changing the cardinality, then it's infinite. So this definition should start to seem pretty sensible now. Are these definitions the same? So now we've got two definitions. We have the one that we used last class, 
that says it's infinite if there is no bijection between the set and any set of natural numbers up to k, for any k. And we have the definition that Dedekind came up to that said it's infinite if it is the same cardinality as a proper subset of itself. Did those seem like they mean the same thing? Yeah. yeah. There's definitely a lot of reasons we like Dedekind's one better. This definition is defined as set in terms of something not existing. That means to show that a set's infinite, we've got to prove something doesn't exist. Proving something doesn't exist can be done. It's not so desirable to have needing to prove something exists as part of a definition. In order for those definitions to be equivalent, what are the two things we would need to be convinced of? Okay, good. If I'm understanding, we need to go in the direction of saying, if according to this definition a set is finite, it's also finite according to that one. So that would mean all of the sets that have a bijection to the natural numbers up to k are also Dedekind finite, meaning not infinite. Is that easy to see? So what we would need to do to show, okay, so we have our two definitions. We have to show not two also implies not one. That's one direction we would have to show. We would have to show the other direction, and we have to show the positive directions as well. If we could show those four separate things, we would show the definitions are equivalent. So we're not going to do all four, but is this one easy to do? Finite by this definition implies finite by the other definition. If we have a set that has a bijection to the set of natural numbers up to k, what do we know about a subset of that set? Yeah, it has one less number. Every subset we remove at least one number from that, the cardinality changes. So it is not infinite according to Dedekind's definition. This fits our intuition. If a set is finite and we remove any number of elements, the cardinality has changed. That satisfies both definitions consistently. The infinite case is a little tricky. We'd have to look at, look at the bijections. We said the natural numbers is infinite according to our previous definition because there's no bijection to the natural numbers up to k because there are natural numbers beyond k. Right? We know there's no bijection. Can we show that this property is satisfied by the natural numbers? And we pretty much already did. We already did with this. We showed the natural numbers has a proper subset, which is the same cardinality, because we have a bijection between them. So we've shown both of these properties, enough to be convinced those definitions are equivalent. So we've got two definitions that are both consistent and seem, I don't know if I'd say intuitive, but should make sense when you think about them enough.